So today we are gonna mess with hexane a whole bunch. Hexane uh, is an organic chemical. Uh, it's a solvent, can get used to dissolve a lot of things. Not something we wanna play with a whole lot. It is mildly carcinogenic, so you don't wanna like splash it all over your hands and that kind of stuff. But it's organic, uh, like methane, propane, butane, all that kind of stuff, so it's flammable. Uh, it turns in, it, it's non-polar. So it only has London dispersion forces, so it doesn't hold on to itself real well. It holds on to itself uh, a lot better than methane does, like the little gas jets. I'm pointing at the gas jet that you can't see, right? The little gas jets we use for the Bunsen burners and the Meeker burners. Um, those are much smaller, so they have weaker London dispersion forces. So those are gases all the time. Um, hexane is a liquid at room temperature, but it vaporizes really easily. So I put some in this flask. And we're going to do a whole bunch of different problems with that today. We've been working with Graham's Law. We've been working with gas density. We've been working with Pivner problems. We've been working with uh, a bunch of things. So we're going to we're going to work through a whole bunch of things that you can do around this and try and see how you would attack these problems. So uh, first question we have is what mass of hexane fills this flask, right? So gas has mass. Oh, there's a fun little uh, rhyme for you, right? Gas has mass. Um, and uh, so it actually, it, it does take mass to fill this up. You can might be able to see the liquid sloshing around in here. It's in here vaporizing. Uh, we're gonna mess with that uh, a little bit later. But if I wanna do this, uh, I see mass. When I see mass in gas laws uh, chemistry right now, I start thinking, well, if I knew the number of moles that I had, I could do a molar mass problem and get to mass that way. So uh, hexane, hex is six, right? So that's C6. H14, right? C6H14. Um, that We didn't cover that. Uh, that's organic naming. We didn't really cover that when we were doing naming stuff. But uh, So I can get a molar mass there. So if I can get N for my Pivner problem, I can do that. Well, we know R is 0 0.08206 liters atmospheres per mole Kelvin. We know uh, temperature is room temperature. So I went ahead and grab the logger pro it is out of battery so i've got to adjust it here so you can see the screen i've got a gas pressure thing and a temperature thing so it's 19.3 degrees celsius hopefully you're going whoa whoa you better change that to kelvin and our pressure is uh 98.5 kilopascals our volume is 2.0 liters. Now you wanna be careful, right? Students get volumes wrong on, on flasks all the time. They'll look at something like this and they'll say, oh, it's an 1800 milliliter flask. Well, 1800 milliliters is here. Two liters is clear up to the top. So when we say a 250 milliliter beaker, that's filled to the top pretty well, right? So we've got uh, all this stuff. We do have to mess with units a little bit. So I'm gonna do plus 273. I'm gonna do 101.3 kilopascals for every one atmosphere of pressure because I want my units to cancel. Remember, I can do these pressure conversions on the back of my periodic chart. I can see what things are equal. It's 101.3 kilopascals for every one atmosphere. So we've got, I did our unit conversions and stuff. Uh, we, can, we should be able to do all those unit conversion kind of things now. With our Pivner problems, we know with using the 0 0.08206, we need our pressure in atmospheres, we need our volume in liters, we need our temperature in Kelvin. Uh, I'm solving for N here. Again, I don't like to rewrite all the numbers a bunch of times, so I'm gonna rearrange the variables. Uh, that Students are usually less comfortable with that, but it works a little better if you get comfortable with rearranging variables. So I divided both sides by RT. So now I do need to show my problem with the, the work in. Uh, that also gives me another chance to make sure my units are all in the right places and all that kind of stuff. Uh, usually when students are having trouble with the math, uh, they either just haven't worked enough problems or they're trying to do too much in their head and they're not writing things down. Make sure you're writing things down. So 0.97 times 2 divided by 0 0.08206 divided by 292. And that's going to give us 0 0.08096 moles. That is too many significant figures, but that's the middle of the problem. I don't need to round right now. Our goal, right, I'm always keeping my eye on the prize. Our goal here is about the mass of hexane. Moles is not mass. Moles is moles, right? But I can get from there to mass, right? So uh, we'll go ahead and um, erase this stuff. I've got one last step to do. That's back from first semester where we're doing a molar mass. So I'll say 0 0.08096 moles of hexane. Say, well, for every one mole of hexane, 
right? I want moles caddy corner so they'll cancel out. And I just need the, the molar mass of hexane, C6H14, uh, which let's see, that's 12.01 times 6 plus 14.14, 1.01 times 14. Uh, so that's going to give us 86.2 grams times 0 0.08096. And that's going to give us 6.97 grams of hexane. That's the mass that fills this up, right? There are a lot of other things we could do with that. We could figure out density and, and that kind of stuff. Well, how can I figure density? Well, you know volume from this already. So this is mass. I got ahead of myself there. We hadn't asked the question yet. We could solve for density. How, go ahead and pause it. Try and see if you can figure out density. But we have the mass of the gas here. We could solve for volume pretty quickly. Uh, well, not solve for it. We know it. It's two liters. So all I have to do is divide this by 2.0 liters. And that would give us 6.97. Oh, you know what? I should have rounded this, right? I had, uh, I, I, I think, two sig figs was how many sig figs I should keep. So really, this should have been 7.0, right? The, the answer to this question, to, to correct significant figures would be 7.0 uh, grams. I can certainly use the unrounded for calculations. Uh, and then round again, so 3.48 grams per liter, so 3.5 grams per liter is the density of this gas, right? So we know the mass, we know the volume, so we can get the, uh, we can get the density of that gas. If we were to do the same thing with nitrogen, right? Now, you should be able to conceptually say who's more dense, nitrogen or hexane, in this room. We talked about gas density uh, conceptually and stuff, so maybe think who's going to be more dense, hexane or nitrogen? Remember, the only thing that mattered if they're in the same place is molar mass. So this has a molar mass of 86. Air is mostly nitrogen. So we figure 28 grams per mole. Even if you figure in the oxygen, the oxygen is 32, so it's like an average of like 29 when you do a weighted average of those two. So this is going to be a lot more dense than nitrogen is. So let's see if we can make use of that. So we have our hexane uh, right here that is heavier than air. We then, and it's a flammable gas. I've then got a a uh, little tube here. It's open on the top. All right? Can we see that pretty well? It's open on the top, and then I've got a bunch of little candles in it. Uh, we can do a couple of different demos with this. Uh, one of them that I like is this one. Uh, we can also do some stuff with carbon dioxide and, uh, and that kind of stuff. But we'll light this bottom candle here. And then we will uh, I'm gonna take the lid off here. Notice I've goggled up for science, and I'm going to take, and uh, since hexane is more dense than air, I'm going to try and pour the hexane. Right, and then you don't panic when you've got fire right there. You just cut the source off. Right, so hopefully you're able to see that pretty well. Uh, we're going to go back now and try and figure out how fast those hexane molecules are moving. On to new ideas with our hexane stuff, right? So we, uh, we looked at density a little bit with it. We solved for the mass that was in that flask. We could also then compare some speeds. So this is more of a Graham's Law idea, right? So if propane moves at 450 meters per second and hexane moves at 322 meters per second, what is the molar mass of propane? They're in the same environment, so Graham's Law applies. If we heat them up, right, they're both going to move faster. If we cool them off, they're both going to move faster, but they're going to do that proportionally uh, to the inverse square root of their molar masses. Well, that sounds awkward, right? But this is a Graham's Law problem. We know the molar mass of hexane. We know how fast hexane's going. We know how fast propane's going, so we can solve for the molar mass of propane. Students tend to have more math problems with Graham's Law than they do the other ones, right? PV equal PV. Math-wise, that's pretty okay for most high school juniors. You start getting this inverse square root stuff, and I see a lot more just math mistakes. So good idea to pause me, write out all your work, and solve this one, and then come back and, and watch me work through it, right? Uh, or, you know, let me work a little bit and pause it along the way kind of thing. So we'll go ahead and do uh, uh, rate of uh, propane, I'll do rate P for that. Can we see that? Okay, rate P is 450 meters per second. Uh, rate of hexane is 322 meters per second. Uh, the molar mass of propane is unknown. The molar mass of hexane 
is 86.2 grams per mole. We just did that in our last problem, so we don't have to refigure that uh, out. So then um, my equation, Graham's law, is rate of one of the chemicals, and it doesn't really matter which one goes on top or bottom. I tend to like to solve for things that are on top, so I'm going to put the molar mass of propane on top, so that means I need the rate of hexane on top. So the rate of hexane over the rate of propane is going to equal the square root of the molar mass of propane over the molar mass of hexane. Right? We need all these steps because they help us get there. Don't just try and do it all in your head. So uh, let's see, hexane's on top, so 322 meters per second on top, 450 meters per second on bottom, equals the square root of the molar mass of propane divided by 86.2. So mathematically, maybe you're fine. You know, maybe this is not, you're like, why are you stressing about this kind of thing? But um, I'm going to want to get rid of that square root sign. So I'm going to turn uh, 322 divided by 450 equals 0.716 equals the square root of the molar mass of propane over 86.2. So now I'm going to square both sides, because if we square both sides, that gets rid of this. So I'll square that and square that. Well, if you square a square root, that gets rid of it. Um, oh, we're going to need to, to angle over. I'm messy with my work, so it goes all over the place. So we're going to have 0.512 equals the molar mass of propane over 86.2 grams per mole. Hey, look at that. My units canceled out here, so I ended up with no units. I'm now going to multiply that by a grams per mole. So unit-wise, I'm going to have grams per mole for my molar mass for propane, so that makes sense. 86.2. Uh, so I multiply that by, so multiply both sides by 86.2, and my molar mass of propane is 44.1 grams per mole. Right? Uh, propane is a three-carbon alcohol, so it's three carbons at 36 plus eight hydrogens. That works out great. 44.1 grams per mole. Uh, we should be able to solve for a molar mass. Thing in here, we should be able to solve, or sorry, molar massing in here, we should be able to solve for a rate. Uh, we should be able to solve for density stuff. These are a little bit more complicated problems. You kind of got to go, what do I know? What's my goal that I'm trying to get to? How can I get from, from here to there kind of stuff, right? Uh, but anyway, just keep working problems uh, out of the book and uh, the problems that were given to you, and we should be in good shape.